So, Doc, insert a data and statistics, and we choose our variable, temperature, and customers. Remember, we need to get the variables the right way around. And might it be that the, the increase in temperature might lead to an increase in the number of customers in the shop? But if you have that the other way, do you think that having more customers in the shop leads to a higher temperature in the weather outside? It can't be that way around, can it? Okay? So if we think that maybe the temperature has an effect on the number of people coming to the shop, this is correlation. It seems to be quite a strongish positive correlation, except for that outlier, which is a bit of a pain. Okay? But we'll deal with that in a moment. So a number of things we want to do. We want to work out the correlation coefficient for the original data. Now for sure, this outlier is going to affect that value for the original data. Anytime there's an outlier in the data, even though this looks linear, so Pearson's is good, the outlier is going to affect this Pearson's correlation coefficient value. Let's go and do it anyway. So let's just go back to our spreadsheet. In here, menu, statistics, we've got a choice. We can go stat calculations, and we can go two variable statistics, that will give us our R value, or we can go linear regression, that will also give us our R value. I'm going to do this one, temperature, customers, and then that will be okay. And as we scroll down here, notice my equation of regression, the gradient is 1.4. 1.4. Tell the person next to you what the heck a gradient of 1.4 actually means for this graph. Tell the person next to you. There it is, just so you can see it. Okay, Amanda. Go on, what was your idea? Guys, hush, 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 hush. We'll take feedback now. Amanda? When the temperature goes up by one, it's more likely that 1.4 or zero. That's exactly, isn't it? Any time you've got this gradient, it's a rate of change. And the rate of change is about time. It's for every one of these, how much does this change? And okay, you know, for every one degree, 1.4 customers comes in. So if you actually scale that up, for every 10 degrees, 14 customers would come in. 1.4 over 1 times 10 times 10, 14 over 10. We did that with our GDP a little bit ago, I think. So there it is. But can you see that that line of best fit, look at all these points here above it. This point here is being taken account of by this line, and it's dragging the line down. Without this point, that line would be maybe further up here. Okay? So let's go back to our spreadsheet. The correlation coefficient, if we go down, is this, is this R value, 0 0.314. Strong, medium, weak. What is it? Weak. Anything below 0.5, weak. Weak positive correlation. If it's a weak positive correlation, then we shouldn't even be drawing a line of best fit. The whole point of drawing a line of best fit is to use the line to make predictions. But if the correlation coefficient is weak, they're not going to be reliable predictions. Think about what I just said, because part of your work today is to write a summary of all of this. Okay. So it's really important that we talk about reliability and validity here. So let's go back now to the graph. Yep, so having this line on here is really pointless. I'm going to go back and delete it. I don't think I can. Oh, sorry. I'll go back to here now. So now I want actually to go and do the ranks. So let me go in here. Let me scroll back here. Let's just go up here. Okay, fantastic. So I'll put here. This will be rank. Hard to spell on this keyboard, isn't it? Rank. It's so cool. 
That's called rank of T. We'll do rank of T first. And then in here, I will do a rank rank of customers. And it doesn't matter that this data is in here, I'll just overwrite it. It's absolutely fine. Now, of course, here, you could just do it by I. You could just go all the way down this data set and find out the highest and put a 1. But we've got a tool to do it. Watch the magic. If I click on here and go up to the first data point, there it is. You can do this by hand on your handheld. You then do shift and you hold down the shift with your thumb and then on here you go across and then down. Can you see how that's opening up everything? And it doesn't matter if you go way too far beyond the extent of the data set. So this method of hitting the shift and holding it down on your handheld, you have to hold it down, and then clicking, scrolling across, scrolling down should highlight the whole of the two column data set. So practice that, it's actually quite easy. That's easier on the handheld than on the computer. Okay? You have to have this skill. It's gonna save a lot of time on any exam. And now, I've got a spreadsheet here, so let's go to the spreadsheet menu. And it looks like data or table is good, but it's actually actions at the top. So under actions, under actions, can you see we have sort as an option. Now look, is this the right range from A1 temperature to B24, B is the customers? Yeah, I want to sort those two columns. I'm going to sort it from by column A, temperature, but I want to sort it as descending. Okay, let's just go back up now. Let's see what's happened. Beautiful. Can you see it's sorted this out in size or the biggest and smallest? But the 33 on your data set is with the 84. It's taken the other number with it as well. So it's important that those pairs of numbers stay intact. And now all I have to do is just type in one, two, three, four, five, because temperature, rank temperature, click. One, two, three, four, five. Can anyone see a problem yet? Anyone see a problem? Yeah? What's the problem? This is already ranked but we need to type in the number of the rank here because this is what we're going to plot the graph up next, okay? So it's ranked, we do, oh, we, we know, we know it's one, two, three, four, five, but you physically have to plot the numbers rank of temperature against the rank. That's what Speeman's rank does. You have to plot that scatter graph. Uh, any problem? Um, wait, this is my personal thing. I have to type the title and see it. How do I move it over? Uh, you can highlight the whole thing and copy paste. Okay. You can try that. Yeah. And there is a problem here, isn't there? These are these are joint. So what do we do? 4.5, We just split the four and five equally amongst the two. Yeah, four plus five is nine. Nine divided by two is four point five. So this is the only technical thing that we have to remember. Back to here. Four point five. Four point five. But then don't forget, three four, five, this becomes six. And then keep going. Six. Seven. Oh. Eight. Nine. Uh-oh. Seven and eight. Seven point five, seven point five. Yeah, And there's gonna be some more for 27, yeah. Okay, so you get the idea. Why don't you do that now, so you're ongoing with it, and then I'll show you the next bit. I'll carry on doing this. This is 7.5. This also is 7.5. 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to put 9 there. 10, 11, 27, 27. So therefore, 
9.5 and 9.5. Yep. Let's have a look. Let's scroll back up. Any good questions to ask? Let's just see if you can count for everything. Uh, one, two, three. I've got kind of like a four and a five joint. Four and a five joint. So we have to take account that that 4.5 and 4.5. See that joint? Four, five. So this is six. Yeah? This is seven. Oh, guys, look. We've got this to help us at the end. Seven, eight, nine. This is joint again. This is 9.5. This is 9.5. And that's 9, 10. 9, 10. This is 11. Oh, crikey, this is a 12 that these guys share. Who created this data set? So that's 11, 12, this guy's 13. Okay, done. So 13, you see that? I mean, it's, it's easy enough to adjust. It's a bit of a pain because you've got so many ties. So many ties, okay? So guys, wherever you are, can you stop what you're doing? Ice the board, because now we want to put the customers in ramp order. And while this might be one and two, there's a 35 here. Is this 10, 11, 12? So I'm going to do the same ranking again. So watch the magic. Click on one. But this time, we're not going to just rank the first two columns. We need to highlight all three columns. We need to include this number here, we need to attach this guy to the 33 and 84. We need to have the 30, the 75, and the 4.5 all being in the same row. All right. So click on the 33, shift the first three columns all the way down to the bottom. Again, I've got I'm way overshot what I need, it doesn't matter. It'll just sort the numbers at the top. Where do I go next? Menu. Actions. Sort. Sort by what? Which column? B. We've already done A. A was the temperature. We need to sort by B. I need to sort descending. Okay. And again, let's scroll back up to the top now. Beautiful. But 84 was the first ranked amount of customers. 80 was the second, so that matches here. I believe the 78 is the third ranked customer, but it's a 7.5 ranked temperature. Okay. So over here, it doesn't matter that the data are in here, we're just going to overwrite it. Same thing again, we're looking down this column, we're being mindful of any joint ties. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, no ties yet, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, thank goodness, there was no ties in that column, that was great. Questions? Great. Uh, let's see what's happened there then. If I go back up here to my scatter graph, okay, watch therefore as I do temp changes to rank temp. And cust changes to rank cust. Beautiful. Can you see the outlier is still there though, isn't it? The outlier is still there. Let's go back to here. Let's scroll along right to the top again, just so I know where I am. Let's go down, let's go along to the first free space. Um, the previous R value, that was for the raw data, and that was Pearson's, was 0.314. 
the new correlation coefficient, which is Spearman's, because it's on the ranks, menu, statistics, statistical calculation. I'm going to do linear regression MX plus B again. And here I'm going to make sure I choose rank temperature against rank customer. I'm just going to OK it. Let's have a look at the correlation coefficient. So a bit better. If I look at the rank versus rank rather than the raw data, raw data, definitely Spearman's is better, isn't it? Pearson's is really low, 0.3 weak. This is 0.51, which I think is moderate. Because it looks like, because of that outlier, Pearson's correlation coefficient is very sensitive to outliers. All right? So clearly, see where the question's going. If we ditch the outlier, then Pearson's would be better. But if we ditch the outlier, maybe Spearman's would also be better. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, and so, unfortunately, the thing is, when we go back to this original data set, let's go back to the graph here. I'm going to go back to the original picture. So this would be up here, I think. Is there one more up here? Oh, no, it's alphabetical. So temperature is way down here now. There you go. Temperature. And here against customer. All right. This one here is the outlier. 31.35, I think it is. So go back to your data set. Go and find 31.35. There it is. Press the delete button. Dimensions mismatch, no problem, okay. Click on its partner, delete. Now let's go back to our scatter graph. Oh, look at that. So that outlier was down here, wasn't it? So that line's changed. The grade's now 2.5. For every one degree change in temperature, 2.5 customers come in before it was 1.4 or something. So that's had a big impact for sure. Let's go and find the correlation coefficient. Again, when we're doing these correlation coefficients, I'm always going to go to the first available space here. Menu, statistics, stat calc, I'm going to do linear regression, MX plus B. This is going to be back to customer. This is going to be back to Temperature, which is, oh, my bad, X is temperature. So when I drop that down and saw customer, I just grabbed it, wrong way around. The, it's temperature on the X. So let's scroll down to the bottom. Temperature. Up. On the X list is temperature. Beauty. On the Y is customer. Okay, it. Yes, I can overwrite data. And now let's look at the new R. Oh, yeah, beauty. Look what Pearson's has moved from 0.3, weak correlation, just by getting rid of that one outlier, it's jumped up to 0.8. This is what you guys found before when you were doing the plan of the whole month, all right? Brilliant. So this already now is strong positive correlation. But then we've got one more thing to do. What do we have to do now? We've got to do the same with the rank temperature against the rank customer with that outline removed. Now, unfortunately, I can't rely on this ranking from before because we've got one point removed. All right, so we're going to have to do the re-ranking again. So I'll do that again, then I'm going to leave you in peace. I'm going to highlight the first two and then rank them according to temperature, and then I'm going to type in the numbers in here again. That might take a little time, but we'll do it. Shift, click, highlight, down. Doesn't matter how far you go. Menu, actions, sort, column A, descending, go. Go back to the top, and then type in the ranks in that third column. 
Brilliant. One, yes. Two, yes. But this is joint third now. Three point five. Three point five. Okay? I'll leave that to you to play with now. Once you've done the rank for temperature, go ahead and do the rank for highlighting all three and then sort by B and do the rank for customers. I'll pause the video. What are you doing? You know. 